back in 1993 uh, over breakfast uh, at Denny's with two friends. Since then, as CEO, uh, he's led NVIDIA to become the world's uh, most valuable semiconductor company. NVIDIA's stock has been on a tear, up 240% this year, reaching a trillion dollar uh, market cap. And we are so grateful uh, to have you here today as we all try to make sense of what is happening in the world of AI. And I, I think in so many ways you saw this uh, first. And so I'm hoping to start with this. And I, I said you, you power uh, what OpenAI and ChatGPT has been. We've all been reading about uh, OpenAI and all of the travails um, inside that, that company and nonprofit. And we'll maybe talk about some of the governance issues there as well. But you delivered, I think this is, this is back, um, I don't know what year we're talking about now, but you delivered the first box, the first chips to Elon Musk, who was one of the founders of OpenAI only a couple of years ago. What did you, what, what happened? Well, I delivered to him uh, the first AI supercomputer the world ever made. It took us five years to make it. It's called a DGX. It's everywhere in the world today. Um, people think that we build GPUs, uh, but this GPU is, is uh, 70 pounds, 35,000 parts. Out of the 35,000, eight of those chips come from TSMC. Uh, it is uh, so heavy you need robots to build it. It's like an electric car. It consumes 10,000 amps. Uh, we sell it for $250,000. It, um, uh, it's a supercomputer, so it takes another supercomputer to test it. This, this is a, a computer first of its kind. And we started working on it in 2012. Uh, it took me five years to build it. At first, I built it for our own engineers. And I spoke about it at one of our conferences, and Elon saw it, and he goes, I want one of those. And, and uh, he said, he, he told me about OpenAI. Uh, I also knew uh, Peter Beal, uh, who was a, a Berkeley professor. He was one of the early people at, at uh, OpenAI. And uh, Ilya Suskover, uh, he, I met him during the AlexNet days uh, five years earlier. He's and, involved in all the drama that we've been reading about. And so anyways, I, I delivered the world's first AI supercomputer to OpenAI on that day. And, and uh, people took pictures of it and it's on the internet somewhere, yeah. Um, when you did that, and you said you didn't do it originally for him, what was it, though, that you saw at that point, five well, years before you even delivered it? In 2012, when, when this all first started, uh, first happened, AlexNet did something remarkable. Uh, here's a, here's a, um, a neural network. It's a, it's, a, it's a software program where the way you programmed it was to show it the results that you wanted, which is the backwards of most programs up to then. You know, programs up to then were, were engineers would sit down and you would write software and then you would test it to see if it produced the outputs you wanted. But here, you showed it examples and you, you, um, uh, you taught it uh, what outputs you wanted, what outputs to expect. And so when we first saw the results of it, AlexNet, the results were so spectacular that Alex, uh, um, uh, Krzyzewski and, and uh, Ilya Suskover and, of course, Jeffrey Hinton, they achieved results that, of computer vision recognition that, that no, no computer vision expert were, was able to achieve before that. And so, so the, first, the first observation was is how remarkable it was. But then, then we were, we were um, fortunate to have taken a step back and asked ourselves, what is the implication of this uh, to the future of computers? And, and we drew the right conclusions that, that this was going to change the way computing was going to be done, this was going to change the way software was going to be written, and this was going to change the type of applications we could write.